what I have here is the um, web page. I've just opened it up in my Visual Studio um, just so I can quickly go through it and tell you what you want to configure. If you remember before when we were looking at the Arduino code here, um, at the very top there was this section where we had the IP address, so right here, right? 192.168.1.247. Obviously for the browser, you know, when you download the browser from the blog and you um, use it, you need to configure it for the IP address that you're using on your network. What I've done to make that easy is I've got a variable at the very top here. Just change this address right here where it says 247 to whatever one you're using. Leave the slash at the end and leave the HTTP colon slash slash at the beginning. Um, but just change the address in the middle to suit whatever your environment is. Um, these are the two commands for the get all for the analog all JSON format and digital all JSON format. Um, the rest of this I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through it but this whole bunch of code that's all cramped together right here that's the gauge um, library that um, I got off the internet. There's a link on the blog to where it came from. Um, and then this next bit of code here is um, an update slider. So every time I move one of those sliders for the PWM, um, it has an on change detection event occurring, which is pointing it to this function. And what this is doing is it's doing that no cache thing that we saw on the um, output before from the debug window. It's doing a um, there's the get message with the IP address and it's putting in the PWM channel that we're interested in and whatever value that was passed in from the slider. Um, when it gets the results back um, it is putting it into the, it finds the PWM channel element in the browser page and puts the value that um, came on it as well. So we just, sorry, this is, it's not coming any, getting anything back here. In this particular one it's outputting it and it doesn't require a response and then I'm just reflecting the value into one of the HTML um, elements so that you can see what you've just sent. Uh, the do command is being used by the um, get milliseconds as well as the digitals so it's taking the element and a command and if it's the digital it's just sending out the digital command and there's no element that's getting updated with anything because the digitals don't return any data at the moment. If you hit the get milliseconds um, it's updating the target element which is the get milliseconds with the value that got returned. Like I said I'm not here to teach you how to do HTML programming I'm just giving you a quick rundown of what this is doing. Um, get the digitals it does the same thing as the other ones it sets up a connection um, this is the command to get the digital values um, and then when the response comes back there's actually a trigger that comes back um, you can see it here on ready state change which means when it does the call as soon as the state changes when it comes back to say it's ready and it's got some data it comes into this function um, this strips the JSON format a string into its individual components which then have names attached to them and then this just goes through one one at a time digital not one two three four and assigns the values to the inner part of the HTML which basically is where the ones and zeros show up underneath the buttons um, same thing for analogs all right so it's all a lot of this even though it's big it's actually just a lot of repeated code Okay, now we're into the actual HTML, but this this first part here is just a bit of cascade style sheets, just to give it some um, curves and borders and sizing and things. Um, these four canvas statements they're used by the gauges, so they're empty at the moment. But when the page load event runs, it starts loading up and calling this um, to execute the the gauges, and you'll see that code a little bit further down for that. Then we've got the buttons for the digitals. You've got the get milliseconds right here. Um, these are the div tags where the ones and zeros show up for the digitals. And you can see the buttons on the right here. They have an event attached to them um, right here. So when you click the button, it does the do command and it passes in uh, these parameters. Um, next we have here are the two sliders. These are standard range sliders and they have an event which remember I said you you know it calls out the update slider function that was above gave it two two parameters the PWM and the this dot value which is this is the value of the slider 
and there's a um, in output area right here with a name which is what is passed in right here and when the function's finished it puts whatever value that had into here so when you're moving the slider it's just updating this to say where you're currently at um, this next bit of weird stuff in the script tag these are all to do with the gauges so this is the initialization for gauge uh, the first gauge this is the second gauge and it's repeated two more times for gauge three and four most of this as you can see is setting up the range of the gauge so um, obviously because we're dealing with analog inputs it goes up to 1023 for a um, binary value well it's a decimal value but it's re reflective of the 10-bit uh, binary and then it's giving it a label um, and things like that for the display it's giving it the uh, major tick values to go around the gauge and the colored highlights where it shows the green and the like brown and the um, reddish colors you can define the ranges for those and then you know w whether you want it to bounce or be elastic key and things like that so different effects for the gauge are in here as well you can just google it the like i said it's on the blog for the link and you can find out all about how you can tweak these parameters right there um, and then here's the last gauge uh, which is formatted slightly differently just to show you what you can do and then it's just a bit of footer information so this is all standard HTML stuff so that's what there is in it like I said the only thing you really have to worry about in here um, is changing this IP address to reflect what you're using and that's it everything else as long as you follow the code as it is uh, should work right out of the box and where's my Arduino here you know it'll be calling this it'll be having this nice pretty screen showing up uh, see this is still ticking away in the background these are the sliders so all of that stuff I just showed you as far as HTML is concerned um, it makes this which is really cool I think this is a really um, pretty web page as far as a console and you can imagine you know you could have say temperature humidity um, you know outside temperature outside humidity so if this was a home automation a changes of a few labels and a changing of the scales this could be telling you the temperature inside and outside of your house and the humidity inside and out you could be turning lights on and off with these you could be reading if you set this to automatic you could be reading a um, a door sensor or something like that and you could even have this hooked up these sliders they could be hooked up to um, a string of LEDs with a power MOSFET driving them um, you know for under the counter lighting maybe mood lighting in your living room or something like that um, obviously you can set background text and everything else so you can see very very easy to set up a complete home automation system I mean this is almost the Internet of Things if you actually put this web page um, onto your laptop or onto your tablet or something and this does work on a tablet by the way I have tried it um, you could access it from anywhere you know it's an IP socket you could configure your router to expose it over the internet and you could be you know looking and changing things from anywhere in the world basically very very easily um, one thing to remember though currently there is no security in this so if you can do it anybody else could as well